In this video, we're going to learn how to define the number e. e is a very particular number defined by the expression 1 plus 1 over n to the nth power, but for the largest numbers of n. So as n approaches infinity, meaning uh, like 1, 2, 5, 10, and n gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And as it gets bigger, whatever the value of that expression approaches is the value of e. So let's go through this little table so you can see how you define this number. So if n was 1, then 1 over n would be 1 over 1, which is 1. And then 1 plus that 1 over n, 1 plus 1 is 2. So to get this number, I need to raise 2 to the first power, which is 2. Next, if I plugged in 2, I get 1 over 2, which is half, so 0 0.5. Then 1 plus 0 0.5 is 1.5, and now I have to raise 1.5 to the second power, which will be 2.25. But as you start to see, it's going to get a little harder to raise these numbers to these powers. So I'm going to use a calculator, and I'll even check the recent one I did. 1.5 to the second power is 2.25. Now I'll plug in 5, which gives me 0.2 for my 1 over n. Then you add 1 to get 1.2. Now we'll raise that 1.2 to the fifth power. This gives me 2.48832. Then I'll raise my 1.1 to the tenth power. So you get when you plug in 10 for n. So 1.1 to the tenth. Gives me 2.5934742. Then we'll keep going. Now we'll do 1.01 to the 100th power. So yeah, 1.01 to the 100th power. That gives me 2.7048138. Then we'll do 1.001 to the 1,000th power. So that's 2.71. Uh, six nine, and then I'll put two four to round it off. And you're going to start to see here that at first it was just kept steadily growing, but now it's starting to even out. Now I'm at two point seven range. Even though these numbers are getting huge, because the inside is getting smaller, it's starting to even each other out, and they're starting to approach a particular number. So if I put in one point zero 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 one, and I raise that to the ten thousandth power. Not divided, raise. I'll get 2.718, of the 6 to round it. But you're starting to see now there's a pattern forming. So now it's like 2.71 is the commonality between these two. But I'll keep using bigger and bigger values for n. So now I have 1. 0 0.00001 for those zeros to the 100,000th power, which gives me 2.718268. Now I'll do it again, keep making it bigger. So 1.0000. 0, 1, 5 of those zeros to the 1 millionth power. And I get 2.718280505. And then I'll put 1 billion n for n, which is a gigantic number. Which 1 over n would be 10 to the negative 9th, but with a lot of those zeros. And 1.0, 1, 1, 1 plus 10 to the 9th raised to the 
But it looks over here, these nine zeros, that is 10 to the ninth, by the way. So I could plug in one plus 10 to the negative ninth power raised to the 10 to the ninth power, 10 to the ninth being that one billion, which gives me 2.718218. And if I were to even put bigger powers in, so instead of like 10 to the ninth, put in like 10 to the 20th, or even bigger, so it'll be 10 to the negative 20th raised to the 10 to the 20th power. Ooh, I messed up somewhere in there. It just told me one, so I guess there might have been some rounding error happening. Let me just try it to the negative 10th, so you can start to see maybe a pattern forming. But you'll see here it's getting closer and closer to this value. So we can say E is approximately two points, the common numbers between everything, seven, one, eight, two, eight. And then I would say one, eight, eight, two, eight, one, eight. If you're comparing it to the 10 billion, plug it in. But we will get more and more accurate the more and more you plugged in. So we'll say E is approximately this value. So let's look at the function Y is equal to E to the X power. Let's see what this graph looks like. So first, E to the zero, this number to the zeroth power should just give me one. So I can always plot that point zero one, which we went over last time for exponential functions, just because E is a very particular number. That should still be a very common number to see. Now let's look at e to the first, which is this number raised to the first. So that is approximately 2.718. So 1, then 2.7. It's about right up here. And then e to the negative 1 is that number. 2.718. 2818. The reciprocal of it, meaning raised to the negative one power, is approximately 0 0.36788. So negative one and point three ish. And if I wanted to plug in bigger values, I don't have to retype this number in every time. There actually is a key in your calculator located right above the LN key. If I so I do second LN, I can now raise E to any power I choose. So negative two power, I can get approximately 0 0.13534. So very small. Again, starting to see it flatten out against the x-axis there. And if I plug in E squared, second LN to the second power, close your parentheses, you get approximately 7.38906. So 2 and 7.3, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then 7 and 3. And this would be my e to the x graph. Flattening out at the x-axis. Going exponentially. A very particular exponential graph. Now if I wanted to uh, plot other transformations of this graph, I would have to go through the changes using a pencil so we can track everything that's changing about it. So here we're going to use transformations to graph this function. Then we'll locate its domain range and horizontal asymptote. So the first thing you want to notice is that for the negative outside of e to the x, we'll do the x minus 3 next. That is a vertical reflection across the x-axis. 
So all the points that would be above it, so here I had a point at 0, 1, will now be below it at 0, negative 1. The one at 1, 2.7-ish will now be at 1, negative 2.7-ish. One that's at 2, 7.3-ish is now be at 2, negative 7.3. So that's negative 3, negative 6, 7.3. Then at the negative 1.3-ish, is now at negative 1, negative 0.3-ish. And same thing for the uh, negative 2.1. And we can start to see the graph shifts to about right here. And then to get to the final graph, we now want to take care of the minus 3 by the x. And we talked about the last lesson, when we add 3, it shifts it to the left horizontally, so now when we subtract 3, there will be a horizontal translation right 3 this time. So every point gets shifted to the right 3, so 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, one, two, three, one, two, three. So it still flattens out at y equals zero. It's just now below that horizontal asymptote instead of above it. So when I go to write the domain, it's still all real numbers. You can plug in any x value you want. So negative infinity to infinity. The range, in this case, wouldn't go from 0 to infinity. It's now actually negative infinity all the way up to 0, since it's flipped upside down. And the horizontal asymptote, which I'll write for short with HA, is still at y equals 0, since there wasn't a uh, vertical shift. Let's look at the last example. So this one has quite a few things going on. I'm actually going to take care of the multiplication going on near the x value. But before I get even get into that, right now that minus 2, you would think that's a translation to the right. But when you think about this function, you need to think about it like this. So e to the factor out the negative times x plus 2. So you'll recognize it's actually a shift to the left. But let's talk about what happens with that negative first. So we have, first we're going to look at f of x is equal to e to the negative x. Take care of those multiplications going on first. This is a reflection, a horizontal one, across the y-axis to start. So every point gets reflected across the y-axis, so the one that's on the y-axis stays there. But there are other point, like 2, 1, 2.7. Now I'll be at negative 1, 2.7. The one at 2, 7.3 will now be at negative 2, 7.3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7.3. And the point here at negative 1, 0.3, it will now be at 1, and then 0.3. And then the one at negative 2.1, it will now be at positive 2.1. So we have our graph about right there. This time we have three transformations, so we even draw the next one in pencil as well. So you we can see where that's located. I forgot to erase away the one in the last graph. So you don't need it anymore. Now the next one, next transformation, we'll take care of is that like plus two that's happening, not necessarily a minus two. So and when we subtract, you go to the right. So in this case, we'll have a horizontal translation left to. So every point gets shifted to the left to. So this point gets shifted left to. This point gets shifted left to. That point gets shifted left two, left two, left two. 
Now my graph is over here. Still flattening out at zero. I don't need that original graph anymore because I've already transformed it. And then lastly, we have the pl added to on the outside. Added to out there. This corresponds to a vertical translation up to. Since I'm adding two to the function, we go up to. So every point gets shifted up to. So this point here goes up two to here. That one goes up two to here, up two to here, up two, and then up two. And we'll see here it starts flattening out not the x-axis. So we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals two this time. It's just shifted upwards. And here's my function. So when I go to write its domain, it's still all real numbers. So negative infinity to positive infinity. Its range, its lowest value it reaches is 2, and then it goes off into infinity. And then the horizontal asymptote is shifted up 2, so y is equal to 2. And that's how you define the number e and graph exponential functions with the base e.